we're here at AUSA 2018 and I'm speaking with Mike Akabuchi, Director of Business Development, GDOTS. Uh, Mike, we're standing beside the, the latest variant of GDOTS's flyer. Could you tell us a little bit about this latest variant, please? Yes, this is the um, this vehicle is built upon the same chassis as Ground Mobility Vehicle 1.1 and the Army Ground Mobility Vehicle, both both built off of a 72-inch wide uh, frame that um, that we leveraged and, and preserved in the development of this. What we did um, to to modify this is we removed the corridors from the back of the vehicle forward and, and below the, uh, the the bed of the vehicle. And what that allows us now is a lot more usable payload space in the rear of the vehicle. This vehicle weighs uh, as much as it can carry. So it's got 6,000 pounds worth of available payload. And with the, the now open sp space in the rear of the vehicle, it allows us, it affords us the opportunity to put a lot more equipment or reconfigure the vehicle quickly to accommodate several different mission profiles. Um, and in terms of, of automotives, um, does it share 100% commonality with, with the, the Flyer 72s that the U.S. Army is currently buying? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the, the vehicle chassis, the drivetrain, um, the suspension all are all identical and alike to both the Army GMV and the uh, Special Operations Ground Mobility um, Program. Um, and did you develop the, the the utility variant to meet any specific user requirement, or did you develop it because you foresee there will be a requirement? Yeah, I think it was more the latter. We understood uh, that there was going to be a need for a vehicle in this class with that sort of payload and configurability. Um, it does sort of um, mimic a a vehicle that's being used by Special Operations Command that they often refer to as the mothership. This provides the same level of uh, um, carrying capability, um, but it's in a, a narrower version, so it's internally transportable for a CH-47, just like the Ground Mobility 1.1. And we've mentioned Ground Mobility Vehicle and Ground Mobility Vehicle 1.1. Um, there's quite a lot of confusion out there over what is what within those acronyms. Could, could you clarify for us the differences between the two? So Ground Mobility Vehicle 1.1 is the SOCOM program of record. Uh, it's a vehicle that is meant to accommodate at least three different mission profiles. One of them is long-range reconnaissance, three, three passengers. The general purpose mission, which accommodates five or six, depending on, you know, how many folks they want to put in the vehicle. And then the last one is the uh, airfield seizure mission, which is accommodate seven. That, that's the original vehicle that we built. Um, from that vehicle, the Army um, issued a directed requirement, uh, which is why they have now have the uh, Army ground mobility vehicle. It's essentially the same vehicle, but it's been reconfigured to accommodate nine paratroopers or nine soldiers, so an infantry squad. And, and, and if we go back to GMV 1.1, could you give us an update on uh, orders, deliveries, and that sort of thing? Yes, yeah, so to date, um, we've been on the program with Special Operations for a little over four years. Uh, to date, we've fielded 350 of those platforms, and we've got orders for a couple hundred more uh, in the coming years. And um, we've already fielded, on a very aggressive schedule to the Army, uh, 19 vehicles, and um, with orders to, to do uh, about 120 more. And uh, we're planning to compete in the upcoming competition, uh, which is the follow-on effort to that. Uh, Army ground mobility vehicle. Uh, and that follow-on effort for the Army's ground mobility vehicle, um, they've, they've recently just changed the, the, the name for that? Yeah, they refer to it now as the Infantry Squad Vehicle or ISV. And, and uh, at what stage is that requirement? Or is, is it actually active yet? Not yet. We expect, uh, we, we're, we're in the process of responding to a recently released uh, request for information. Um, but we're expecting that uh, sometime probably at the end of this year, calendar year, or early part of next year, the Army to, um, to verify and, and confirm the requirements for that particular uh, program and then release uh, a solicitation for open competition. And all the variants that we have spoken about today are on the Flyer 72, 72-inch 72 wide chassis. 
Um, there is a Flyer 60. Could you bring us up to date with, with any recent developments regarding that? Yeah, actually, we when we when our, our design authority conceived of the, the vehicles, they, um, they, they basically took the Flyer 72 technology, cut it down the middle lengthwise, and then reduced it by 12 inches. So we have a 60-inch variant. And what that allows for is internal transportability for a V22. Um, years ago, we, we uh, received a, a small order from Special Operations so they could do an evaluation of what they were referring to as an ITV, internally transportable vehicle for V-22, which we, uh, we performed on, got good feedback for, but uh, unfortunately it never went beyond that. Uh, it's been NAVAIR certified for the internal transportability. Um, it's a very capable platform, and the beauty of that platform, like the others, is that it has parts commonality. So it's essentially the same vehicle, just narrower. It shares the same parts. Excellent. Thank you very much.